Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And with no stranger to the channel, our good friend Frank Troost is sharing another, well, amazing car. Frank, what do we have here today? We have today a 1955 Custom Royal Lancer. And Dodge. Dodge, yes. And this one has the special engine in it? It, it does. It has the, uh, the, the Hemi V8. I believe they were it was 270 uh, cubic inches that year. The, uh, what they call it, the Red Ram or something uh, like that? Yes, I, uh, although I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain. They may have changed that when, if you got the Hemi. They could have called it something else. I okay. don't know, but it says on the valve cover. Can we go look? Yeah, let's, uh, let's first of all take a look at it right here. We've put it out in the sun for you. And this one, well, I'll just let you take that in for a moment. There was no more room to put another piece of chrome on the front of this car. <laughs> right? That beautiful chrome around the hood with that great... I have to actually go that way a little bit so you can see it because of the sun hitting it. Maybe that's a better angle. And even from that angle there, the interesting thing about this car, let's just look at the design points of this car. You've got the bumpers, you've got the grill, you've got the emblem, you've got the headlights, you've got the hood ornament. Everything is pointing forward on the Royal Lancer. And what a great emblem that is on this wonderful Dodge. Now it's a little windy out here because, well, we're in the Windy City area, so we're just going to tolerate that. Also, dual mirrors. We'll step back and show you this car from the side. Come on back with me, Frank. Now, Frank, you've had this one for a while. Yes, I have. Probably about uh, 15, uh, uh, 15 years. And you've won some awards, I saw. Yes, yes, I have picked up uh, some uh, awards with it over the years. What's the reaction when you're driving this one? Well, I think that when, uh, when uh, one of the things about it that makes it uh, different from certainly any car made today or any car made uh, since 1960 is the three color uh, body paint. They had uh, uh, a number of the manufacturers offered their cars in tritone paint schemes, but uh, uh, Chrysler Company probably sold the most. And I, they started in '55. I'm not sure when that was uh, when that was gone. Probably by '59 or '60. Gotcha. All right, and there you can see our tricolors. Obviously, the red, the black, and then the white top. And as we come around, more of that forward thinking as the V8 emblem you could see the V pointed forward and I great jewelry on this car we have a little piece there and look at the look at the intricacy on even holding this mirror I thought that was a great piece there that you can see I'll even show that from above one of the things on the car that attracted attention right away when they were made were the hubcaps. Those Lancer hubcaps were, were the, the number one choice of hubcap thieves because it was a really, really neat looking hubcap with the built-in spinner. And uh, my guess if you left your car unattended uh, down in the city for any length of time uh, and you came back, they would have been gone. How have you kept them all this time? <laughs> Well, there's, there's no demand for hubcaps anymore. All Lord. right, got it. <laughs> Those days are over. All right. I see the wonderful skirts on this one. Nice touch there, too. Speaking of chrome, just that bottom chrome piece and how they give it a little accent, right, almost to make sure that you didn't have any stone chips on there. They called it the 55 Chrysler Corporation, the $100 million look. And Virgil Exner designed this one. Wonderful tale. So we're, we're dealing with uh, 1955 here, and this was just uh, the start of the Finn era. And on this particular car, if you bought the Custom Royal Lancer top of the line, they put those uh, uh, bolt-on fins on top of the rear uh, uh, 
the rear fenders. So the regular one did not have No. That. The, the other thing that uh, is different are the uh, tail light bezels. You can see they're like jet exhausts or something. And if you bought the lesser model, they were just plain chrome. There were no uh, trim rings or anything on them. Obviously our fuel spring loaded. We have dual exhaust. Our Dodge badge. Our wonderful trunk envelope. A push button open there. It's, it's very handy. Uh, Chrysler cars, 55 to about 57 or 8. You can open the trunk just by pressing the button. You don't have to uh, lock it. Uh, so it makes access uh, very easy. And that's a beautiful tail right there. Unmistakable, a memory making tail. Let's take a moment and Frank blessed us with what I call trunk treats. So let's go to our trunk and treats. So we start by presenting the brilliant new 1955 and Frank does a great job of making sure that he keeps all of the brochures. There's the Royal Lancer with the great extra spacious. You see that knight in the background there in the photograph. Above the commonplace. specifications the white gloves and just like this one has the super red ram engine it talks about it there then we have our custom royal royal v8 we won't go through this entire brochure but you can see some of the details there. We have the cool model of the car. The dazzling new 1955 Dodge with the luggage. But this brochure is interesting. It opens up this way. A wonderful night out. Again, the super red Ram engine. And I want to show you the back because this brochure does something else. It talks about the engine sizes. And from there, it opens up this way to show you all the models. Like so. And then some of the ad period correct brochures. Open the door on tomorrow. This one you can see is similar colors to the one we're featuring. Frank has black on the top. The black and white have been changed, but other than that, it's the same. I've got two more for you. arrows in the background of the city and our last one that guy's pretty excited to be driving take command get the thrill
squirrel firsthand. But look at this trunk. Just wonderful. And even the sound deadening in here. And we're back. Frank, let's take a look at the interior, shall we? Okay. Let me not mistake that piece there, too. Well, that's, that's a one piece of trim on the car that wasn't redone. So now that look, would have been gold anodized originally, and then uh, had the black uh, and red uh, paint. Even as you can see, the window molding, all the chrome here. So this, this car is to a great extent the interior is original. The door panels are uh, uh, original. Uh, the, the dash, the, the seat coverings are all original. It was, uh, the uh, carpeting had been replaced. And show those bench seats. You know what I love about this too, and the sun's hitting it, so I'm going to show it. You can see the speckle. It almost, sh it does shimmer when the sun hits it. Well, Chrysler started putting, Chrysler Corporation started putting metallic thread in their uh, cloth interiors in their cars. Uh, another interesting, if you look at the steering wheel, see it says full-time power steering. And uh, uh, power steering was still an expensive option on cars. Uh, most of the lower priced cars would not come with power steering. So I guess they uh, would want everyone to know your car has power steering. So they put that into the horn ring on the cars uh, so equipped. Your brights. So if you'll notice the shift on that, on this, was a, was a one year only. Uh, uh, it's got that, uh, that lever on the dash that was 1955 only. Uh, 54 had a conventional shifter. And then in 56, they went to the push buttons. Went to the push buttons. It, the car also has the seek and scan radio, which would have been um, their, their top offering on a uh, radio in 1955. So it has about everything, um, all the options that were available in the 55. I don't, the, although they could have had power windows, I, I don't know. The important thing if I you would... want to buy one of these cars, these larger cars, Having power steering makes a big difference, uh, especially if you get older like, like me. I had the, uh, what does that say there? Well, that would be the, uh, the cowl vent. If you want some cowl air, vent. You, you pull that down and the, and the vent goes up. Well, I was right in front of the windshield. You were talking transmission, which is clearly on this side. Yes. I thought the transmission was on the other side. And now that you say that, I'll get closer. Now you can read... And believe me, you need the camera to get this close. The cowl vent in here, of course, is our actual transmission shifter. Okay, so I apologize. I was a little bit off board there. But I do want to show these keys, too. Because these keys... Those oh, could be aluminum uh, keys. Yeah, they, they uh, look like aluminum Corporation keys. did that for a while and then abandoned it because they'd break and went back to steel keys. Went back to the steel key. And you can see the dash there. All right, let's, uh, I did just notice the ashtray. That pulls out like so. All right, let's take, uh, let's take a look under the hood, shall we? Okay. So in case you have some of your newer viewers may have noticed the seat belts, in the car, and no, it did not come with seat belts. That was only mandated in uh, 1966. But a lot of people choose to retrofit their uh, older cars with seat belts. I generally don't do that. Uh, I think seat belts uh, only work effectively as part of a, a larger uh, uh, safety package with airbags and uh, crumple zones and so on. So. If you just hit somebody hard enough with this, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> that 
the Super Red Ram Hemispherical. Now, I just want to step back for a second. The hood really doesn't open all that much. No. I mean, uh, as a mechanic, you're going to bend your hood head on this. So I'm kind of under the hood inside here to show you some of this. And I'll keep it back as much as possible. You, you can s sort of tell by the hinges that uh, that's it. <laughs> you yeah, know, that, there was no way to adjust it. That's or, as far as you're going. set it any differently. All of the little... This on, on this car, if you notice the, uh, the, the power steering, the pump is running off uh, the back of the generator. Which is, uh, you know, uh, that, that was not used very long. Usually the power steering pump is going to run off a, a yeah, separate belt uh, from the front of the motor. Let me um, get that position there to show you as much as that. One of the things, Frank, I love about your cars is it literally takes you right back to 1955. It's almost like seeing a brand new car in the showroom and taking you back to that time period. Your water bag. Okay, let's uh, let's fire it up with the hood up. It sounds like you're going to have some decent horns. We might beep the horn on this one. And then I'll get a little idle. to say that's not the stock exhaust. <laughs> uh, I, I would not have done that. It was on uh, on the car when I bought it. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, if you would have noticed, the white wall tires on the car are narrow white walls, which is something I wouldn't have put on. I would have used the, the period white walls. But you know, there's always, uh, since I have quite a number of cars, there's always certain things you must fix and replace. So when it comes to things that uh, you'd like to see different, they have low priority. There we go. And this one you were sharing, uh, if people are interested, they can contact you because this one's for sale. Yes, that's that's right. I, I've just, uh, I'm 76 years old and I have about 14 cars and it's just, uh, uh, it's just uh, takes a, a lot of time. And if you don't use these cars regularly, they don't store well, you're gonna run into uh, more issues with them. So no problem with this car, but it's time to move on. Yeah, well, I've, I've been trying to uh, consolidate my collection of cars to just have uh, 57 through 61 uh, Chryslers and Imperials. Frank, always a treat. If people are interested in this car, contact me on the comments. I'll put you in touch with Frank. Frank, thanks so much for being on My Car Story. Well, we've got a little bonus footage. Frank has some tips for the person who may be interested. Frank, share with us. Well, the first car I bought, uh, I was 16, so I guess that's 60 years ago, and it had white wall tires. Every car I've uh, had, uh, older car, uh, since then has had white wall tires. And for years, I, I used uh, Wesley's Bleach White, which is okay, it cleans it, although you really have to use an SOS pad with it as well. Okay. I don't use this anymore because the problem I run into is that on uh, many of these older cars where I, my white wall tires are 25 years old or so or maybe older they yellow in time and Wesley's bleach white uh, or any other product that I have tried on the white walls will not do that so I happened upon a guy that had some tires like I had on a car that I could get not get white for anything and I saw his were white and I tracked the guy down and he told me what he used which is this uh, uh, Eagle product, uh, wheel and tire cleaner. Now, Eagle makes a lot of wheel and tire products, but this one, it will actually whiten the white wall. 
Let's see. Now you still have to use SOS on it, <laughs> but All right. it, it will whiten it. Now will they stay white forever? No, but they might stay white for about three months. So uh, I, uh, I've been using this. I met the Eagle people at a, 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 a car show and I told them, I said, you know, you got a product that's great on weight loss. And they said, yes, we know that. And I said, well, why don't you put it on the, uh, on, the uh, on the packaging? On the, yes. And uh, he didn't really have any reply to that. Okay, so, so, so this I, is I, our I tip know. for our car friends. Thank you, Frank, for giving us a tip Wait, to make life a little easier. I have a second tip. Oh, uh, tip I'll, number I'll, two. I'll make this brief. Take okay. your time. The, the second tip is, at one time I used to show cars. I'm not so much into that anymore. My, my uh, enjoyment with cars is driving them. But one of the things you I'd almost always get dinged for is somewhere there was some little streak or spot on the glass. And uh, I mean, I tried all different products on the glass and nothing really worked. I would still end up with some streaks somewhere. Well, finally figured it out. It's not the product you use on the glass. You could use any of them. The problem is with what you're wiping the glass with. So if you do not want uh, streaks on your windows, you get a microfiber uh, towel, brand new, not used, not laundered, and you use that for your final polishing and buffing and you'll have no streaks. Now the problem is, like I used to use towels or laundered microfiber uh, uh, rags, the issue with those is they have soap residue in them. And it's that soap residue in your, in your uh, towel or laundered rag that's leaving your streaks on the windows. So our two tips, the product for the white walls, the Eagle, although it doesn't say white wall, and the second tip is the microfiber towel on the windows without laundering it straight out of the package. Yes, I keep a few of these. I buy this, you see Kirkland. I, I get them at Costco, a big package. So I keep the uh, fresh ones for the final buffing. No streaks on the windows for me anymore. Very good. Thank you, Frank.